Hello 171 class, this is your notes for section 2.7. Here we are dealing with polynomial and rational inequalities, not equations, but now we're going to have something like less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, okay? And the function is going to be our polynomial. Now, all of these have zero on the right hand side. Um, that's the way you want to put it in before you do the methods that we're going to talk about. But uh, it it may not start off that way. You may start off with part of a polynomial on the left, part on the right, but your goal is to move everything to one side, so zero is on the other. And that way you can use the techniques that we're going to talk about uh, to, to solve those things. All right, so this is what we mean by solving a, a polynomial inequality. Um, what, what basically we're doing here is in this particular problem we got this quadratic and it says greater than uh, zero greater than zero means above the x-axis and less than zero means below the x-axis alright the boundary points are where it's equal to zero okay f of x equals zero means the y coordinate is, remember f of x is like y so y is equal to zero meaning we don't leave the x-axis, we don't go up or down, we don't go to the positive direction or the negative direction. So that's where it's equal to zero, this is where it's above zero, and this is where it's less than zero. Okay, so just know that what we're being asked to do, once we get it in this form of being greater than or less than zero rather than some other expression, then we can talk about being above or below the x-axis. All right, so let's go through the process how we're going to how we're going to do this. So the first thing we do is, if it's not always done, already done, is we're going to set this thing to zero. So one side needs to be zero. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides, and then that will get me 2x squared plus x minus 15 is greater than. Now this side will be zero. All right, and because it's greater than zero, that means we want the regions where the graph is above the x-axis. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is find the zeros of this. So literally, even though it says greater than zero, we're going to set it equal to zero. Okay, and a lot of these will be factorable. If it's not, we'll look at an example later if it's not, but you just use the quadratic formula or the techniques from 2.5. All right, so this will be a 2 and a 1, and then I need outside, inside to combine to 1. So I'm going to use a 3 here and a 5 here, okay, because I get a 6 and a 5. All right, and then it needs to be positive, so the 6 needs to be positive and the 5 negative. All right, and then I solve each of these. So there's my two zeros. Okay, so step 1 again was get this thing set to zero, set greater than or, or less than zero. All right, and then once you've got it there, you temporarily you just change it to find the zero. That's the boundary points. All right, so there's where it's equal to zero. And then you sketch a graph. Well, negative three is further to the left. And this doesn't have to be the most perfect graph ever. That's why it says sketch. All right, five halves, that's like two and a half. That's like over here. All right, and then I wrote over here, I know this parabola, this is a parabola because it's 2x squared. I know it opens up because the number in front of the x squared is positive. So this is a parabola that opens up. Since it opens up, that means the vertex is going to be down here somewhere. And it's going to open upward like this. Okay, now obviously this is not at all uh, what it looks like exactly. All right, I don't, uh, I don't even have to compute where this vertex is. I could, it's just halfway between these two but I don't have to do that I, I just know because these are the zeros and this is a parabola and it opens upward and it's got to be the vertex is down below for it to open up like this so once I have that there's my zeros and oops I want to use open dots there because it's a greater than sign okay it's not equal to what uh, you could close them off, but when we make the solution set, we would use an open dot because it's a greater than, not a greater than, or equal to. All right now, 
Use the order symbol to determine if you want above or below. It says greater than. We've already said that's above. So where is this graph above the x-axis? It's above it back this way. And it's above it back this way. Like for these x's. Remember when your answer, when your question is where is something taking place, the answer are x values, x coordinates. So these are the values where it's above the x-axis. In between these two, we have to go down to get to the graph. But to the left and to the right, we go up to get to the graph. All right, so that's what we mean by greater than or above the x-axis. All right, and then the last part, our answer, if we were plotting it, there's the negative 3. It's just, it's just everything up there but the graph. There's the 5 halves. Open dot open dot. So our solution set, remember left side is negative infinity, right side is positive infinity. Our solution set is what's shaded. So from negative infinity to negative 3, union, and then it starts back again at 5 halves to infinity. Alright, and again, parentheses because of the order symbol being a greater than. If it had been underlined, we'd have to use brackets at these two numbers. Okay, because the boundary points would then be included. But when they're not included, when it's strictly greater than or strictly less than, we'll end up with parentheses there. Alright, let's try this one. So, bringing everything to one side, you are going to bring everything to the side with the highest power, if it makes it positive, that is. So I'm going to bring all this stuff over, set that to zero. So this now says x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 is less than or equal to zero. And because that's less than or equal to zero, the less than means we're below, but the or equal to means we could also be on the x-axis. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the x values where the graph is below or on the x-axis. Now, same thing as before, we are going to find the zeros here, okay, meaning I'm going to factor this by grouping. All right, there's the factor form of this polynomial. I'm going to temporarily treat it like it's an equal sign and find the zeros. So basically, it's just what makes each of these in the parentheses zero. So, so now I'm going to plot those on this number line up here. So the smallest is negative 2, the next biggest is negative 1, and then the biggest is positive 2. Now again, it, don't worry too much about making this perfect on the number line. Okay, Remember, this right here is a cubic, odd degree, right? positive leading coefficient. So the uh, leading coefficient test says odd degree positive leading coefficient, it's going to fall to the left and it's going to rise to the right. So there's the last zero to the right, there's the last zero to the left. It's going to fall to the left of that. It's going to rise to the right of that. All right, because it's degree three, it's going to have two bends. So one's going to take place here. One's going to take place here. So we get a rough sketch of the graph, and that is going to determine uh, these regions where it's below or on the graph. Okay. Now, if I pick somewhere right in here, I go down to hit the graph. So the graph is below the x-axis in this region. So that's part of my solution set. Okay, here we have to go up to hit the graph, so that's not part of the solution set. Between these two, I have to go down to hit the graph, so that is part of the solution set. And then again here I go up, so that's not. So these two yellow regions are the um, solution. So remember this far end is negative infinity, this end is positive infinity. So part of this solution set is from negative infinity to negative 2. Okay, we always put a parentheses on the infinities. But this gets a bracket because it's less than or equal to. So at negative 2, it is equal to 0, so we put a bracket because it is included. Okay, and just remember, if it's underlined for these numbers in the middle here, you use brackets. Alright, and then union it has a gap between values and then it starts working again at negative 1. So negative 1 comma 2 is the closing value for that second region. And then it doesn't 
have any more things that are where it's below the axis. So there's our our answer. Now, understand what it means to be part of the answer. Um, if I plug in something that's in this yellow region, like for instance, negative 3 is in there. What it means for negative 3 to be in there is if I plug negative 3 into the left side of the original equation, right, I get negative 18. That is less than or equal to if I plug negative 3 into the right side of the equation. Okay, And it's going to work for any number that was in either of those regions. If I plug in 0 here into the equation, or sorry, any quality, um, 0 cubed plus 0 squared is less than, 0 is less than, 0 uh, times 4 plus 4. 0 is less than 4. It's true. Okay, but if I pick something that's not in there, for instance, like like 3 is not in there, positive 3. If I plug positive 3 into this original inequality, it means it's not going to work. It's, it's not shaded as part of the answer, so it's not going to work. So 4 times 3 plus 4. I get 36 is less than or equal to 16 if I plug in positive 3. 36 less than or equal to 16. That doesn't work. It doesn't. It's not true. So it's not shaded. So anything that's shaded, when I plug in those x values for the x's in these two expressions, it makes a true statement up here. But anything that's not shaded, if I plug that in, it's not going to work. All right. That's what it means to be a solution to the um, to the to this answer. Okay. Now, when it says graph the solution to the real number line, the only thing is that um, this thing wrong won't be there. All right, it, this is graphing it on the number line. All right, but you use that little, you, you sketch a graph of the, the cubic or whatever the polynomial is once you've got it set to zero to have a, an idea of where the regions are going to be, where it's above and below. Okay, it's not the x-axis until one side is zero. Okay, you can't do it when, when it's like this form. Okay, you got to move everything over and then do it. All right, now here's going to be an example where you can't um, factor. So you got to remember that if you can't factor, then you have the quadratic formula or those techniques from 2.5 if this is higher than 2. So this is positive, so I'm going to add 2x and subtract 1 from both sides. All right, so after I move everything over again, I get a less than or equal to 0, so on or below the x-axis again. Now, I can try to factor this, but it's not going to factor. Uh, again, it's not going to factor uh, with with integers or, or fractions. So what I end up doing is the quadratic formula, and I'll let this be A, B, and C. All right, so I'm going to set that up. All right, so there's the setup, and then just working through it, I get a square root of 20. The square root of 20 is 5 times 4, so the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 square root of 4 is 2, all right, so I get 2 square root of 5, and then this is a negative 2, so I'm going to reduce this with the 8 on the bottom, so 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 square root of 5 divided by 2 is just 1 square root of 5, all right, and then 8 divided by 2 is 4, so I just reduced all those by a factor of 2. So this is the, uh, the form of the zeros, this is again what the quadratic formula does is it finds your zeros. Like if again, if this had been equal to zero, this is what makes it equal to zero. Now you can plug this in your calculator to approximate it, but still the answers are going to be required to to uh, be in um, exact form for your solution set. So uh, it's fine just to leave it this way. You know that the one where you subtract is further to the left than the one where you add. So I'm going to label this one negative one minus the square root of 5 over 4 and then negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 4 is to the right. Okay, now this is a parabola that opens upward because it's a positive 4x squared. So it opens up like that. Alright, closed dots I'm going to use because of the or equal to, and we're wanting it to be on or below. So here it's above, down here it's below. I have to go down from the x-axis. Here it's above. So here is our graph.
graph of our solution set. Alright, and then we would write that as negative 1 minus the square root of 5 over 4, comma, negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 4, and then close the bracket. Alright, so just know that it's not always whole numbers and fractions. You get these irrational numbers as part of your solutions too. You just are going to have to use the quadratic formula to get those, especially if, when it asks for an exact answer, not to approximate it. All right, method two, uh, regions and test points. This one we already did. We did this one right here. All right, and we got this as our solution set down here. All right, so we're going to do that one again, but with the, a different method. So the way the regions and test points method works is you still find your zeros, just like we did before. So five halves and negative three. But once you do that, when you sketch them on your number line this time, instead of making a parabola go through here like we did last time, what we do is we realize that we have created three regions on the number line by these two numbers. The stuff that's to the left of the lower number, the region between the two numbers, and then the region to the right of the upper number. So there's one, two, three regions here. All right, and then this lower region right here is from negative infinity all the way up to negative three. So I'm going to say that's negative infinity, negative three, and then the endpoint or the symbol I'm going to use here is a parentheses because it's strictly greater than, it's not underlined. So I'll put a parentheses there. So there's region one. Region two goes from negative three to five halves. And again, parentheses for both. So negative three, five halves. And then the third region above five halves, that's from five halves to infinity. Okay, and I don't need this region down here. Okay, uh, or this last column, or this last row, I don't need that. So a test point in that middle region. That just means something that, that's in here. Any number that falls in region 1. So I'm going to use negative 4. Okay, that falls in that region. Okay, and then a number that falls in region 2. Something between negative 3 and 5 halves. Anytime 0 is a part of a region, that should be your test point because it's just the easiest thing to work with. And then something in region 3, something bigger than 5 halves, which is the same as 2 and a half. So I'll just pick 3. Now all we have to do is come up with the sign. If I plug in negative 4 into this thing right here, I'm just coming up with the sign. So when I, I'm going to plug this into my calculator. Okay, not the original, but once I've got it solved, greater than or less than 0, depending on the sign. And I'm going to go to second window, table set. Okay, and then come. I'm going to come down here from uh, independent and tell it to ask me for the independent variables. Okay, now when I go to table, it's blank, and I can type in these test points. So negative 4, 0, and 3. So positive and we don't care about the number, we just care about its sign. So it's a positive number, a negative number, a positive number. So a positive number, a negative number, and a positive number. Now, it won't always alternate signs from region to region, but most of the time it will. Okay, but it, you have to still do it because it doesn't always do it. But you, uh, it has to do with multiplicities of zeros and everything like that. But just know that um, it, that's typical to see that alternating sign between regions. All right, now what are we wanting? Well, it says greater than zero up here. So we're looking for pluses in this table. So this sign and this sign is what we're after. So that means region one, right, the first region, and region three, the last region, are where this thing is uh, above the x-axis. All right, so that's another method that you can do. And notice it gave us the exact same solutions that we got the first time. Negative infinity to negative 3, that was one of the regions. 
and then union join that with this one five halves to infinity all right there is a picture of uh, the, the screenshots that I did there to get there so you you can pause this and kind of practice that or um, I can put this on Moodle for you and, and you can download it print it out if you'd like all right let's do it again this is the other one that we've already done all right cubic and we moved everything over so we got this greater than or equal to zero okay now we've already done the zeros all right um, before right here all right so we've already got the zeros so negative one negative uh, negative two and two are my oops are my uh, the, the zeros are the boundary points so they're what's going to determine our regions so this is again negative infinity this is positive infinity so these regions that, that these zeros create there's one two three four of them now all right there's always going to be one more region than there are zeros so this has three zeros that means four regions so region one goes from negative infinity to negative two Okay, this time because it's underlined, we're going to use a bracket. All right, and then this is the next region, negative 2 to negative 1. Negative 1 to positive 2. And then 2 to infinity. Remember, always use bracket, I mean, uh, parentheses on infinities. So then we just want a number that falls in each region. So I'm going to use negative 3 for here. In between negative 2 and negative 1, I don't have any integers, so I'll have to pick a decimal so negative 1.5 between negative 1 and 2 we cross over 0 there so I'm going to use 0 and then anything bigger than 2 so I'm going to pick 3 all right so there's my four test points and then the sign that's a negative all right that's a positive negative 4 is negative and then 20 is positive so there's what we get when we plug in those. You know, that's what we're after. Here is the sign. Okay, it's not going to give you this column on, on the calculator, but you can pick up the signs from there. So because it says less than or equal to zero, we want the negatives from the table. So we want there's a negative, there's a negative. So that means this, the union of these two, is our solution. So negative infinity to negative two bracket union bracket negative one to two bracket all right and again if we graph that there's negative two there's negative one there's two the solution set would look like this if we graph it okay close dots because of the or equal to All right, a really cool thing about your calculator is it will show you this when you uh, do your work. It'll actually show you the solution set. So, again, the test menu on the calculator, if you press second, oops, let me turn it on. If you press second math, that's the test menu, if you can see that. And then there's your order symbols, 3 through 6. All right. So what I typed here is 5 is greater than 2. Because that's true, the calculator returns a 1. 5 is greater than 9. That's not true. So the calculator returns a 0. All right. Now, by understanding that, this is what the calculator does when it, you plug in numbers on each side of that order sign to test if it's true. You can graph these things. If you graph... Um, this quadratic that we've done before if you graph it in your calculator but put the instead of just the 2x squared plus x minus 15 and getting the parabola if you put in the test menu the greater than zero um, you actually get a solution set so there it is when I put it in and if I press trace when I plug in zero I get zero all right, remember we already did this one okay and remember when we plugged in zero 
we got that negative it didn't work so zero is the, the output is zero I mean it's not true so this is not true when X is zero All right but when I go over here to something like three I go up to one this region right here the Y value is one meaning it is true so it's true in this region it's not true in this region look at where these signs are this is um, five halves that's 2.5 3 is bigger than 2.5 okay uh, if I go back to like negative 3.1 all right I get true all right that makes it true that's in this region to the left of negative 3 but if I put in negative 3 it's not true negative 3 makes it equal to 0 and we want it to be greater than 0 so anyway it shows you this same uh, number line it will actually show you the solution set graphed um, on a number line so it's a great tool to use to check your solution now I plugged it in with a greater than zero I could have also plugged in the uh, original wasn't set to zero yet we, we moved it around to get it set to zero I could have still used this menu so 2x squared plus x, if I would take this away and move this and have 15 on the other side, now it's exactly what the problem originally said. It still gives me the same solution set. Okay, it's still, there's the negative 3, oops, I didn't hit trace. There's the negative 3.1 as part of the solution set. Negative 3 is not, 0 is not, uh, three was okay so it's still the exact same solution set so you can literally type in the original problem and make sure that you got your your answers right all right so that is um, the uh, test menu and how it can be used to help with these polynomial inequalities